So this week on Roadworthy Rescues, we're back in the beautiful Black Hills of South Dakota. We're actually driving the Black Hills Blazer we put together season one. Yes, sir. Pulling in those rifle motors again right now. I actually wrenched here when I was a little grasshopper. I actually even helped build the shop. But when we were putting this truck together, I was eyeing a wagon up on the hill and I happened to make a deal on it. This actually works in my favor because my wife Jessica has been wanting a wagon, so I feel like I finally have permission to bring a car <laughs> home. <laughs> So this is a wagon, Clark, right here. 1987 Delta 88 custom cruiser in all of its glory and fake wood grain and very underpowered. I actually have a vision for this thing already. I've, I've always wanted a pro tour-esque kind of car. So that's exactly what we're gonna do with this. Hop up the suspension, lower it, tires, wheels. And I wanna go cruise through the Black Hills. I'm gonna take you guys through my favorite roads, switchbacks and pigtails and bridges and tunnels and more all that stuff. But first, Sean, we got to get this running and see what it needs. Get it off the ground. That would be helpful. Yeah. It's been sitting 16 years and the story goes, someone sold a house and just abandoned it there. Good friend Roger picked it up and here it sits. Let's take a look, see what it's going to take. Oh yeah. <laughs> Pretty fancy actually. Oh, it is wood grain. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's got a tape player. That's pretty sweet. It's an AC car. I think you could put a full-size bed in there. Are the seats missing or just fold No, they're folded down. Let's open the back back up. See what we got. We got flying creatures everywhere in this. These are cool. They fold down or out. What? Really? Let me show you. OK. Look at this. Are you looking at it? How do you roll that down, though? Is it I power? It's probably powers. Somewhere. Watch out, wasps everywhere. But here's the other handle. And see, it's got a different pivot point, and it'll come down. Well, I'll be. <laughs> Man, it's like mint under there, though. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, we got our build RPO parts identification thing. It's pretty sweet. And a lot of spiders, stuff like Does that. Does that storage go all the way underneath that? Oh, yeah. This thing is awesome. Roof rack. Spoilers. We're gonna have to do a wasp relocation, I think. A delete? Yeah. Eminent domain. <laughs> You're gonna have to move. We'll deal with that later. Let's look under the hood. Yep. Oh. What are all those snakes? It looks good, though. Okay. Oh, yeah. So this is a smogged out Oldsmobile 307. It's like 145 horse and 250 foot pounds of tire shredding torque. And then you minus about all of that for the smog. And AC. It would be cool to get the AC working though. It's gonna be hot this week. Real hot. I don't have any idea if this even rotates, if it's locked up. It's got a quadribog on it. It does have HEI. Don't know what those things do. Have no idea what those lines are. Is that the smog pump thingy it would do? All the vacuum lines are. That should be fun tracing all that down, huh? Yeah. Okay, we should probably get this running before we get ahead of ourselves. Then maybe suspension? Yes. Okay. Did you see it had overdrive? No, I did not. <laughs> oh man, we're gonna be highway bombing. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'll push on the belt. You crank there croissant wrench. Whoa! And hopefully it turns. Go. Yep, it's yep. rotating. Go oh, again. Easy too. Oh, that means there's no compression. Okay, smog pump's turning, air compressor's turning, water pump's turning. Our steering was turning. Okay, nothing's locked up then. Should we just throw a battery in it? And... Yep, let's go. So when they left the car, they like left it, left it. They just... That is crazy. To leave the keys and everything with it? Everything. Just walked away. There was this in a Cadillac. I don't know where the Cadillac went. All right, 
right, here we go. Does the engine turn? Nope. Remember why we were curious why they would leave the car? Uh-huh. So the very first thing we gotta do is put a starter in to even know if it runs. Rev on it. Yeah. <laughs> She's a runner. Oh. oh. All we have to do is rev on it. I'm filling up the bowls here and giving just a tickle of fuel like that. We're gonna crank this thing over and see if it fires. If it fires, then we don't gotta worry about the ignition. It's got spark. If it doesn't, then help us understand this one. Bring the thunder. Bring it again. Lock it. We're good, dude. Let's just go. Just ignore the knock? Yeah. Try it again. Oh, there it works. It's getting worse. On this episode of Roadworthy Rescues, sounds like another engine swap. So here's where we're at. The car runs. It was actually running off the gas, I was in it. But here's the other thing, the engine is blown up. It sounds like a rod knock or something not good. So we're going through our options. We're definitely not gonna find an Oldsmobile 307 anywhere because why would anybody have that? We might try to find another B-body. I also see an Omega over there. We're gonna go pop the hood on that. Maybe there's an engine out here somewhere. Not really sure, but we're gonna go yard crawling right now. Chevrolet Nova, Oldsmobile Omega, Pontiac Venture, Buick Apollo. What does it spell? I... Nova! Oh! You didn't know that? No. What's this got? Rotates. Would that even move that car? Holy, look where my face was. Oh, God. <laughs> Danger. <laughs> we walked the yard. There's a couple of what appear to be 307 or 350 Oldsmobiles, various different options, but they are stuck in there. It would take us a day to get them down to the shop and pulling another questionable motor to this. We're back on this. So I'm gonna dump in Marvel Mystery Oil. No one knows what's in it, it's a mystery, but it could help free a sticky lifter, hopefully. And then we're gonna run it a little bit more and then we're gonna put air in the tires and we're gonna try to drive it down to the shop and then reassess the situation for the fourth time and then come to the conclusion that the engine's still bad. This here is high solvent energy technology. I don't know what's in it. There's skulls and crossbones and stuff. I usually dump it down the app, clean up the fuel system, but I just had an idea. Let's throw in the crankcase, see if we can clean up these hopefully gunky stuck lifters or we just ruin everything. What is that noise now? That's the uh, smog pump. Sounds like that Slipknot drummer, that metal band. You just never really know what's gonna happen. Hey, remember when we were gonna drive this through the hills? What was that about? I moved the steering wheel and all of a sudden... <laughs> Anti-radio theft, you know? How do you change the station then? Turn it left? Well, we're going to try to drive this down to the shop anyway. Maybe we just drive backwards. You ever seen a movie Smoke Signals? That's how they get around. Really? Yeah. We're going forward. There we go. While well, we're on it. Oh. 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 Easy with the brakes now. <laughs> we 
brakes work. That motor's toast, man. <laughs> I've got a loose, tentative plan. We found an engine somewhere in the middle of Minnesota, and uh, our producer's gonna jump in a pickup and go get that for us. It's like an eight hour drive. He's a wild man. Meanwhile, we're gonna pull this engine and transmission and all the different stuff out to get this ready to receive this other engine that hopefully, fingers crossed, ran one park deal, will work. The good news is we can clean up a lot of this emission stuff and hoses and doodabs and whatnot, and it's starting to rain. So we've gotta just knuckle down and try to get something done. Figure out what all of this is plugged into. There's a lot of things that it's plugged into. What is happening? Look at this thing. How does that work? What's this do? It's ground. That's already off. It's a good thing Derek's a maverick mechanic. He can just put all this back together and sleep. I, I don't know what any of these wires do. We're never gonna get this motor running again, huh? No. Well, on the top side, we just got a lot of hoses and pipes and whatnots, and we tried to unhook most of the wiring, but let's be honest, there's things cut. Now it looks more like an engine. We got the radiator out, the shroud, the fan. We got the fuel disconnected. We've got the power steering unhooked. Now we're underneath, get the starter unhooked. We got to do motor mount bolts, transmission cross member bolts, speedometer, any other wires, drain the trans, drain the engine as well, so when we pull it, we're not dumping stuff all over the ground, because we haven't spilt a single drop yet. <laughs> what? What are you even doing right now? What are you, what did you, you do? You know, I was moving the oil pan, but I forgot that there was already oil in the oil pan. Oh, and you shoved it? I pushed it, I pulled it back towards me. How'd that go? Since we're gonna be cutting these corners up at about a 14 to 15 mile an hour speed on probably stock rotten tires by the time we get the engine in here, we're gonna want a new fuel tank so sediment and things aren't sloshing around. Also, the fuel tank is leaking all the way around the seam. Guy's got the quadra bog off here. Well, we got a new whole plate installed. We should be ready to yank the engine and transmission out. We're gonna do it as one piece since we're getting rid of this transmission. It doesn't really transmit anything anymore. And we left all the accessories and everything on here trying to save time, which is gonna bite us in about five minutes. It's gonna drag, but just keep going. Well, today has been filled with highs and lows and empty spaces and a lot of knocking noises. But I think for tonight, we're just gonna clean up the engine bay here, call it a night. Tomorrow, we'll hit it hard and we've gotta fill this space with something other than one horsepower. We were greeted with a gift this morning. This is our $600 1983 Oldsmobile 307 and 200R4 overdrive transmission. No idea if it runs. No idea if this shifts, but we're gonna go ahead and put it in anyway. Now you might be wondering, why didn't we just put a 350 in or a diesel or some other thing that would potentially bolt in? Well, it can happen, but there's a lot of rigmarole with mounts and doodabs and hoses. So we decided this just keep the 307, keep the original heritage of the vehicle, and this is what we're going with. I've already power washed it. We're gonna Craigslist rebuild it, you know, add some new main bearings by just spray painting the oil pan. And I gotta start taking the old manifolds off. This one's been welded shut. We need that to keep our original custom exhaust, which is mostly rotted and kind of works and then start moving accessories and everything over. Hopefully by the end of the day, this combination will be on the car and it will once again be running, except without a knock. This is the 
old manifold off the old knock knock engine. The one that came on our new sweet $600 unknown engine, the guy welded this off. So you only had exhaust here. This is a crossover that goes to the other side. Well, we need both sides of the engine to breathe, but the stud was snapped off. So I'm making a stud right now so we can attach or hopefully attach the exhaust. Woo! I was just doing a quick visual inspection. When you buy these used engines sight unseen, you can be surprised what you find. Also, we got a Craigslist rebuild, and I don't want to ruin my chrome because I won't get home. So we're um, going to take both sides off, then we'll fog it down. And then we're just continuing to doll up accessories. At least it'll look sharp. Sharp as a nail. Sharper than a thumbtack. Getting ready to set the engine on top dead center. It's got the typical 1843-6572 firing order, but I think somewhere in the early 80s, they switched from clockwise to counterclockwise ignition. I think it had something to do with the HEI. Not sure 84 to 87 could be wrong, but we're gonna test out the starter here, see which way that turns so we can figure out which way the flywheel turns and thus the accessories and lastly the distributor. So when we do put it at TDC, we line up the ignition wires correctly in the right order, trying to save us hassles down the road, Sean. Good. We rebuilt the whole engine. We've replaced the water pump. We've put a new fuel pump in it. Basically, we're just trying to fix all the failure points now. So when we're in the Black Hills trying to have fun, we're not fixing it more than 32 times. The old engine had computer-controlled timing. We don't have that anymore because someone took a Leatherman and cut everything out of the engine bay. So we're going to a Petronics. It's a one-wire system. And we're gaining vacuum advance and a simple one-wire hookup, which we have. And then we don't have to worry about all of the computer-controlled stuff for timing. We think we have this where we need it. We've guessed on belt sizes. We have the accessories on. It looks less complicated. It finally has less hose than an LA nightclub. We're going to stick this thing in, hopefully. Pop the bolts in, and it's done, right? Right. Okay, bring her in. Two more up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now. An inch. Okay. Okay, now in. Down. In, down, in and down, same time. A little more in than down, way too much down than in. I'll come down. You see what's happening? You good? No, no. Hold on. Come down. Down a little. Good. Okay. Yep. Well, we've got the engine and transmission in, drive shaft hooked back up. We've got the rear end drained, looks pretty good. We haven't filled it yet, though. <laughs> Basically, we've got to do all fluids, engine oil, transmission, and rear end. Now we're just working on all the accessories. We've got the, the uh, gearbox, power steering hooked up. We've got the uh, compressor hooked back up. We've got one of the heater hoses in. We're getting ready to drop the rad and get those hoses on. We're gonna move to a flex fan. It is hot and I live in the south. We're gonna need all of the cooling capacitized. We also got a cheapy little plastic rad we're gonna put in and get rid of the old one. It's moving along slowly. There's a lot of little things. I'm about to embark on the fuel make it happener. We have gotta put a square bore to a spread bore adapter in here. That's gonna be our Holly. This goes to the Edelbrock side. And then finish up the 
cap and lightning hoses, so our ignition's all set up. Sean already put sparklators in. Hopefully by sundown, this thing's gonna be running. <laughs> nope, but that's all right. We made progress. So we're gonna go with the vacuum secondary Holly 600 CFM electric choke unit. So this is a nice bolt-on unit. It's got the digitals. Like I said, you don't have to run a manual choke lever. It's vacuum secondary. So whenever the engine wants the four barrels, that's when she's gonna get it. Well, more like. We're getting ready to fire this thing. Chop's filling the transgression up. I am uh, trying to fill the carburetor bowl. We don't have a fuel tank still, and we decided to intentionally leave that out because we still have to finish the rear suspension, which there's a lot of bars and tubes and brackets and bolts and washers and gadgets. So we need all the room we can get. But I'm gonna fill the bowl. We should be able to turn the key, and if we just hear it, make noise. I think we're ready to call it a night. Accelerator pump confirmed. Crank it. Make sure it's a part. <laughs> Do it again. Yeah? No, it's not working. Oh. It was maxed out past 60, so. Well, the engine works, it sounds like. It needs timing work. That's why it burnt all the hair off my right arm. But it sounded like it had oil pressure and about 50 horsepower. So that's going to do it for tonight. We are absolutely exhausted. What a mad crash today. Tomorrow, we've got a lot to do. Yes, it runs, but there's linkages and cables and cooling systems, and now we're on to rear suspension. There's still a lot to do to make it to the Black Hills.